previously on Alonso's Way. Driving up to five red lights here at Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve in Canada. And lights are out and we're away. And we're actually still squeezed. We're actually going to get a bit um, held up by Raikkonen in front. And that allows Massa to go around the outside of us. As you can see, he's right next to us. Um, as you can see, Raikkonen's going super slow through our last corner. And we've got the RS. We're actually going to go side by side with Kimi Raikkonen. Coming on to the end of lap 16 though. And yet again, we're going to give it another try of trying to get past Lewis Hamilton. This time, we've the one, we're the ones that have got DRS. And I go into the first corner. Are we going to get first place? And we cross over onto the other side of the track to get, you know, to get the inside line for the corner. And we actually get first place. But coming through the last corner, is Lewis Hamilton going to get us on the final lap on the final corners? It doesn't look like it. And Fernando Alonso will take his second win with McLaren Honda at Canada. We're glad you can join us for today's practice session here at the Red Bull Ring in Austria. The weather though hasn't been good to us today. We have dark skies overhead and a damp track for the drivers to deal with. We should be set up for an interesting session as the teams attempt to gather as much data as they possibly can about this circuit. They'll have to go out and start testing the track limits, so you might see quite a few cars running wide or locking their wheels as they see how hard they can push. As they get used to the track, the times will get faster and we should see less mistakes. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximising top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible, hang on into the corners and max out down the straights? This is a power-hungry circuit and that means it will definitely favour the teams with the Mercedes power unit. That's pretty much the key requirement for a lap time around a track like this with its long straights. Teams without the power advantage will have to consider sacrificing some wing in order to lower their drag. Hey guys, I'm Viper and uh, welcome back to a brand new episode of Alonso's Way. This is episode 8 and uh, today we're at Austria. As you can see, it's full wet conditions though, so not the greatest of conditions for our current on that. However, because we're on wet, you know, because it's wet with heavy rain and everything, I think that we've, some, we've got uh, an advantage here. I mean, you know, in a dry we might not have the pace, but in the wet I think we've definitely got better pace than we usually do, so that's pretty good. Uh, but as you can see, we're in practice, and um, during this first lap, now I know this, this is, other people probably found this a bit of a pain, but first practice lap, come through the first corner, Rosberg comes out of the pits, and I'm not kidding, Rosberg, he try, he's like, it's like we're racing him, but we're not, we're just in practice, yet he still thinks he, he he still tries to overtake us, you can see there he's on the left. It's pathetic, I don't know why the AI do this, but anyway, as you go through the first corner, uh, first uh, practice lap, I'm just showing what it's like on the track and all the conditions and all, it's a bit of a weird one with this, because Austria is one of those tracks that it's quite quick and everything, in the wet it feels a bit different, um, but it's one of those tracks that I think we could be a potential threat to the uh, title, let's say title contenders, you know, championship contenders. So hopefully everything goes well. Um, but uh, coming through the last corner now, and uh, obviously there's only eight corners on this track, I think it is. I think it's eight, uh, eight or nine corners, less than ten a lot. We're going to cross line to 119.2, but as you see, going on to the next lap, actually coming across the line now. I see Hamilton's going quickest. We're going to come across to 118.430, I think that is not far off only three tenths off which is good but um, yeah that's our practice and uh, on to the qualifying so now I'll hand you over to the commentators thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon where qualifying is about to start here in Austria so sit back and enjoy the afternoon session most of today's current crop of racing drivers haven't driven this track before, so adding in the element of rain should provide us with a fascinating qualifying session. The drivers should be up to speed for the dry weather with some track running and dozens of hours in the simulator, but one thing that can't prepare you for are these tricky conditions, so it may take some time for the less experienced drivers to readjust. 
Right, so qualifying time for the Austrian Grand Prix coming across the start finish line now. As you can see, we're beginning our qualifying lap. Going into the first corner, which is actually kind of hard to get right. You see, we actually go a bit wide onto that curb there, and that's actually going to cost us a bit of time as our exit's been compromised from that corner. Obviously, right, so this is where we're going to lack the most in, in a straight line. You see, Hamilton's up front, and uh, coming into, I think this is turn two. Yeah, it's turn two. Uh, what is this corner is actually I'm particularly fond of. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. It's one of those corners that I find it interesting, and you'll see why in the race. Uh, I'm not going to say anything else, but I think it's an interesting corner for AI and everything. So, you see, though, we're actually managing to keep up with Hamilton's Mercedes, which does not actually happen in real life. So, this is quite surprising that we're actually going to keep up with them here. And um, as you can see, coming around into the end of sector two, this is going on to sector three now. This corner here, actually, the left hander, it goes left and right. The right hander bit I can get right, but the left hander, it's difficult to find the apex. As you see, we're kind of out, we're out in front at the moment, but Hamilton's going to be still first. Coming into the last two corners, we're still in the lead. We're in the lead. This is going to be quite surprising. We're going through the last corner now. Are we going to cross the line? Are we going to take our first pole position in McLaren? Are we? It looks as though we have our first posi pole position. And look, Alonso seems happy, so we must have done good. But um, how good will we have actually done? Well, we'll find out off the commentators now. What a wonderful performance then from Fernando Alonso, who put in the fastest lap time of the qualifying session to be on pole for tomorrow's race. He's certainly going to be leading the charge from the front. And if he can get through the first couple of laps without any issues, he could be difficult to beat based on today's performance. What a result from qualifying. Pole position in front of both Mercedes and both Ferraris. Now that's something you don't see every day. And as you see, from where we are, we're actually, we've got a three tenth advantage over Hamilton there. So whether that will translate into the race, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I see both Mercedes, then the both Ferraris, both Williams. Followed by Ricardo's Red Bulls, so that's the normal, usual suspects really. Grosjean getting into the top 10. Force India with Hulk and Big Mice to get into the top 10 as well. Verstappen just missing out. Nasa 12, Perez 13th. A teammate but 14th, so not as bad as he was uh, last time out. Danny Kliat 15th, so not great for Red Bull if I'm honest uh, with him. Carlos Sight 16th. Maldonado 17th. Ericsson 18th. And the two manners ran out the bottom two, so. I think, looking at the race, it looks as though it's going to be interesting because, you know, with the, with the weather conditions, if, if they're wet again, which they might be, but I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's, from, that's all from qualifying, and I'll pass you over to the race. Welcome to the Austrian Grand Prix here in Spielberg. It's race day and the cars are already on the grid as the drivers complete their final preparations ahead of lights out. It was a wonderful performance from Fernando Alonso yesterday to take pole and he'll be hoping that the performance advantage he held in qualifying will now translate into race pace. If it does, then a win or at least a podium place should be possible today. There are a lot of variables that can cause a driver to be happy with the car one day to struggling with it the next. Track temperature, excessive tyre wear or a change of fuel load can all affect the feel of a car. He'll definitely be hoping that when the race gets underway, he's got the same balance as he enjoyed in qualifying. Lewis Hamilton has certainly had the edge on Nico Rosberg in qualifying so far this year. He's dominated his German teammate on Saturdays. I think Lewis has really got into Nico's head now. Nico's certainly a formidable competitor, but there's something about what Lewis is delivering every Saturday that he can't deal with. Right, so you join us down on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix. I'm just going to quickly load this up there, but just going to look at the race strategy now. And uh, as you see, we're it's light rain on track, so inters conditions really. As you see, we don't actually have to stop if it because it's wet inters. We don't actually have to stop. Um, same if it was wet, so we wouldn't have to stop during the race. We just have to go from the start to the finish without um, changing tyres. So that's great. I was looking at uh, option and prime to see what the time difference is, but there's no point obviously because it's too wet so moving on to the start of the race now we're going to join Alonso down on the track for Austria and we're going to rev up to five red lights with Alonso on pole position here at Austria 
Lights are out, and away we go. And we're off to a pretty decent start. However, the Mercedes are going to have a better start than those due to their power advantage, and immediately Hamilton jumps on it. But he actually goes quite slow into the first corner, actually going to round his outside and keep a hold of the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. Not bad, really, if I do say so myself, because considering how much, how much of a deficit we've got in terms of power compared to the uh, Mercedes, we've definitely not got the greatest pace, so it's not too bad if I'm honest. Um, but as you can see, there, there was a yellow flag waved during, uh, I think, going up into turn two, which isn't great. But everybody's seen no retirees, I don't think we've had any incidents, I mean, aside from the yellow flag, of course, but... Uh, these sort of conditions would probably work well in our favour, not because it's in these conditions, but like I said before, we seem to have better pace in the wet than we do in the dry, although that wouldn't exactly be proved until maybe, gee, I don't know, Spain. Spain was when we proved it. I think in Australia, in Melbourne, we got quite lucky, but, you know, Spain, uh, same sort of thing, we did quite well in practice, but unfortunately the track dried out, so we got pushed down the leaderboard, but as far as I remember, it was second or third quickest, which is pretty good for our team. So you're coming across the line. I don't know what the gap's going to be. The gap is around... What's the gap? Seven tenths. Oh, sorry. Eight tenths for second time. Not so bad. Um, but on lap four, Hamilton eventually managed to catch us. Obviously, we went quite wide and actually nearly went into the gravel here. And this is going to allow Hamilton and Rosberg to try and get past us. You see, Hamilton's trying to get round us. He's trying to go round his outside. We're going to try and hold him off. We're going to keep our, we're going to stick to the racing line. As you see, we actually, in a way, I don't know whether that was a racing incident or anything like that, but we seem to be up doing all right. But moving quite, honestly, the highlight's quite short for this, but moving on to lap 12, we literally had, there was no competition from Hamilton or Rosberg. They didn't challenge, like they didn't get near close enough to start challenging positions. But coming into the last two corners, as you can see, Hamilton, really trying to push for that he's actually got past Rosberg but he's really trying to push for it as you can see there's Hamilton he's going to get past us we're going to have Nico Rosberg on the left hand side going into the first corner who's going to take the lead after the first corner we hit Hamilton it seems Rosberg went wide and he slipped in behind Vettel so now it's a four way scrap for the lead between Hamilton myself Vettel and Rosberg moving on two laps later though lap 14 we're going to go down his inside we're going, to tr we're going to have the race in line, as you can see, Hamilton backs off a lot, um, and Vettel does as well, Rosberg. It, it appears as that there was an incident at the first corner, as you can see, a car's gone off, I think that's Rosberg. Um, but moving on to lap 16, now, as you can see, we've got an arrow right next to us, and um, we're breaking for the corner, we're turning a bit too late, but obviously by this time, the tyres are starting to really go off, because we've, got, we've gone way past the, the best by date, so... Uh, you see Hamilton though, he's on the inside, he's going to stick to the racing line and he's going to take the, the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. We're going to try our best to catch up, but obviously our McLaren Honda just doesn't have the pace of that Mercedes. However, moving on to the same spot on lap 17, coming through into sector 3 now. See, Sebastian Vettel is right behind us and um, he's catching up pretty rapidly. We move across for the inside line. And he take, he actually, I say he takes us out, but he makes us hit the wall, and uh, I think we sustained some damage, I'm not sure. But that was very uncalled for, I don't know who's who's at fault there. I'll let you guys put that down in the comments, but personally I think that was Vettel's fault, and that was just being a bit over ambitious to try and, you know, do that. But uh, luckily we had the pace to fend off a car, actually we're going at a snail's pace, which isn't great. Um, as you see, we got a warning for exceeding track limits, but we had absolutely no turn on these tyres whatsoever. I put it in lean to try and help us stay, but we're going to come across the line for third place in Austria. could compete with the Mercedes today as they take home another race win. It really was a wonderful performance and one that the team will be celebrating for some time to come. That's it for today's Grand Prix and from Ant and I it's goodbye and see you again next time. 
So a disappointing day then it would seem for McLaren Honda as ourself did not manage to win the Austrian Grand Prix. It was in our grasp for most of the race until Hamilton overtook us and then that collision with Vettel wiped us out of any, of any contention with trying to get second place in the race which would have boosted our championship uh, a bit further. As you see though, Nico Rosberg finishing 10th, our teammate Bolton finishing 7th and Danny Kliat finishing 8th. Red Bull and McLaren Honda getting very good point scoring. Mass only came 9th, so not great for Williams. Both Force Indias didn't score. Both Lotuses didn't score. Both Saubers and both Toro Rosso's didn't score. And neither the Manners, so really, I think that's 4 teams if I count correctly. No, 5 actually. 5 teams did not score points, which is very, very disappointing. As you see, I actually come to have a look and see if that incident that we had with Vettel was... Um, you know, counted, but it wasn't. On lap 14, it was the lap that I went for the move up the inside of Hamilton, as you can see. Button had a collision with Sainz on lap 1, he got a warning. But then, Hamilton, Vettel and Rosberg all got warnings. Hamilton collided with Vettel and got a warning. Vettel and Rosberg climbed with Hamilton, both got warnings. Obviously, we got one for exceeding track limits, but nonetheless. Anyhow, moving on to the driver standings now. Sebastian Vettel in his Ferrari has took the lead of the Drivers' Championship. We're still 25 points behind the leader, so nothing's changed there. However, thankfully, we've managed to close the gap between ourselves and Rosberg, which, as you remember, last time out was actually 25 points. Now it's, I think, 9, it's 11 points, so not bad. There's been a couple of changes in the field. I see Hamilton's moved up, Bottas has moved down, Massa, Ricardo, Grosjean and Verstappen haven't moved. Button moved up after that great performance by himself here. Naza and Hulkberg moved down. Danny Kliat, surprisingly, stays the same, even though he did score a good amount of points this time. Perez, Sainz, Maldonado, Ericsson, obviously the two manners have yet to score any points. So, for them guys, they really need to score points. Obviously, Manor doesn't look as though they're going to be scoring any points anytime soon, but as for the others, they should be able to score some points before the end of the year. As for constructors, nobody actually moves, so... As you can see there, Ferrari and Mercedes are still at the top, with Ferrari actually pulling the bigger gap out of Mercedes after that performance. Ourselves have pulled ahead of Williams by a bit more from the mount, so I think that's 16 points. Then it's a big leap back down to Red Bull, which is now in fifth still, um, with only 45 points. I think that's like 60 point gap, 61 point gap, shall I say. No, 71 point gap, that's big. Uh, but then as you can see, we've got Lotus in seventh, sixth, sorry. Taurus of 7th, Sauber 8th, uh, Force India 9th and Man and Russia 10th with Mana still not scoring any points. As for the fight for 8th is between Sauber and uh, Force India, that'll be interesting. Same with Lotus and Taurus, so that'll be interesting to see how we how we get on uh, during the next round now. Of course, the, uh, the rest of the season. Uh, but that's been it for episode 8 uh, of Once Was Way. I, I know this is a lot shorter than it, what, what it is, but like I said, some races differ. Uh, last time it was too long, this one was a bit short, so I'm glad this one's actually shorter. Um, as you can see, we've got the race start now. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next episode of Once Was Way, which actually is going to be testing. So, a second testing. Obviously, we've got episode 9, I believe, in which is in Silverstone, and then we've got episode 10, which is in Hungary. So, exciting race to come, I reckon, for Silverstone and Hungary. Obviously, I don't think it favours Hungary, but still. Um, so, I'll see you guys for testing, and until next time, I've been Viper Racing, you guys have been awesome, and ta -ra.